Hello, welcome to this, um, to this online course about applied hydraulics, where we will in particular discuss open channel flows. Usually I'm teaching in this classroom, writing mathematical developments on the blackboard or any explanations. And of course, this year with the particular circumstances, it's impossible. So uh, there will be a series of recorded online lessons. In hydraulics, we will discuss in particular the properties, the use and behavior of uh, liquids in general, but more particularly of water in relation with civil engineering applications. Um, so we will start with an introduction explaining exactly what we are going to do. And uh, I wish you will enjoy these lessons. Have a good course. Okay, let's start with discussing the importance of water in the ecosystem. As you can see, we have uh, a lot of water in the ecosystem, but fresh water, that is the water that we will be able to use, only represents about 2.5% of the total amount. So this is not really much. And then if we look at fresh water, we see that more than 99% of it are unusable because this water is either frost water or stored too deep uh, under the ground as groundwater. So finally, the water that we can use only represents 0.36% of the quantity of fresh water available. And this water can be found in lakes, marshes, in the atmosphere and in waterways. So as you can imagine, this water, this fresh water that we can use for human activity and human consumption is really precious. It's one of the most pressure, uh, precious things in the world that we have for the moment. But there are a number of challenges related to this water. The first one is the access to water. In fact, it is one of the major challenges in the coming years because water shortage is increasing all over the world. So therefore, we, need, we really need efficient storage and distribution devices. And these devices should avoid waste of water because as we have said, it is really uh, uh, precious in the world. The water quality is the second water-related challenge. Millions of people in the world still live in cities without sanitation. This causes, um, this causes huge health problems. For example, 80% of Chinese rivers and about 40% of American rivers suffer from excessive pollution. You can imagine that this is a real problem at the scale of the world. And among these problems, plastic containers and debris that are present in open water is an increasing problem. Finally, there are also challenges related to climate change. Because with climate change, there is an increasing risk of flooding that will threaten uh, flood defense structures. These structures were, most of them were designed some years ago under different climatic conditions. So. The climatic pressure due to storms, floods, is now heavier than it was before. So the structures that were designed maybe cannot withstand the new situation. Another problem is that of sinking cities, like the example of North Jakarta. In fact, the authorities are even um, starting the design of a new capital uh, placed on a safer uh, situation to avoid flooding because the old capital is progressively sinking. Challenges are also related to energy production because when uh, water shortage increases, it's not no more possible to produce energy because there is no water. So this is also a problem. And in fact, this is exactly where hydraulics plays a role in civil engineering. As we can see, as is summarized in this picture, um, a lot of civil engineering structures or problems are related to water and to hydraulics. If we look at this bridge that crosses a river, it will interact with the river. And we see it here, the, uh, the bridge piers that are needed for the stability of the bridge are built in the riverbed. 
So there is a strong interaction with the riverbed. You see these deposition areas in the uh, downstream and upstream there is some scouring with erosion. This erosion will threaten the stability of the bridge piers and from there the stability of the old bridge. So it is really important when designing such a structure to have a good knowledge of the behavior of the river um, to to build it in a safe way. And you see that there is a close link between all these disciplines in civil engineering. Now if we look more closely to the uses of water that are related to civil engineering, we can, we can distinguish between the use of water just as a liquid or um, the use of water with all its properties. And this latter use is rather related to human consumption. A first use of water just as a liquid is for transportation that can be either maritime transportation or fluvial in canals and rivers. Then we also have floating of timber or transport by uh, pipes that are also some elements. But the key one is navigation, as we can see here from this picture from the Meuse River. This river is in fact completely engineered, completely adapted in order to promote navigation and to ensure a sufficient water depth all year long to allow for the passage of, uh, of different types of vessels. Here is an illustration of the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal, this these are the, the new locks of the Panama Canal. It links the Atlantic Ocean on one side and the Pacific Ocean on the other side. These two oceans are not at the same level. So uh, to allow the passage of large vessels transporting different types of goods, navigation locks are needed. And as the, this maritime trans, uh, traffic is increasing, new locks were needed. And you can see here an illustration of that. Navigation uh, is also an issue on inland uh, waterways, inland rivers. And what we see here is an illustration of the Rhine-Main-Danube system. We have on one side the watershed of the Rhine and the Main here, and on the other side the, the Danube. Canal will, uh, a canal will allow to pass the water divide between the, these two basins. Here, there is a topographic crest, in fact, that cannot be naturally crossed by uh, water. So, in order to climb this ridge line, a series of navigation uh, locks is needed. You see the number of canals and it's like in fact it's like a staircase for uh, ships so using all the navigation locks they can climb until the the ridge line and then go towards the the danube and to vienna Hydropower is also a reason to um, adapt and to, to build structures on rivers. You have here an example of a power plant on the, the Rhone River in France. And we have here an illustration of a typical plant uh, managed by the CNR, which is the Compagnie Nationale du Rhône. You have the Rhone River here, the natural river has uh, its course here and a dam is constructed to regulate the, the amount of water, the discharge that's, that flows through the natural Rhone. Then the rest of the water is diverted towards this canal here that goes until the hydropower plant. As a canal has a horizontal bed, all the shoot, all the difference in level between the upstream side and the downstream side is concentrated at the location of the hydropower plant in order to produce electricity. But as the river is also um, adapted to allow for navigation, we need to build a navigation lock to allow for the passage of ships. So this is a typical sketch uh, of a plant uh, that we can find on the Rhone River, but also on the Rhine, on the Meuse River, on different European uh, rivers. All these examples um, lead us to highlight the differences between natural and channelized rivers. In natural rivers, the uh, 
the water depth, the water level varies much more than in channelized rivers that are designed to ensure and to allow for navigation. This is quite clear in these two images. Then the production of electrical energy through hydropower is also um, strongly related to hydraulics and civil engineering. Hydropower represents about 15% of the world electricity production. So the hydraulic structures needed for that um, also present some specific challenges in their design. And not only because of the complex and impressive structure of the dam itself. We have, for example, the outlet of the power plant, where we see that we have strong interaction between the water that is released from the power plant and the natural river. What we see here is a hydraulic jump, and all these interactions have to be understood and taken into account to avoid damages to the, to the river. Then we also have the spillways. The spillways are the devices that control, convey, and dissipate the, the energy that has to be from the water that has to be released from the reservoir. Indeed, in some circumstances, when a flood when a flood arrives, there is too much water, and to avoid overtopping of the dam, which would which could lead to the failure of the dam, uh, the spillways are there to uh, evacuate this excess water. So these are very important structures that have to be designed carefully and that in fact have also a huge price or so are important in all the design of a, of a dam. Then we have industry. Industry is also um, a huge consumer of water. We have here some numbers. Uh, paper needs a lot of water, the steel industry, production of fuel, production of sugar, of meat, um, the textile industry and biofuels are all important consumer of water and to consume this water they need structures to convey this water to the industries. And finally uh, we have to consider urban drainage system. A proper, urban, uh, a proper design of urban drainage systems is a key element of sanitation. We have seen in the beginning that millions of people still live in cities without proper sanitation. So there is still a lot of work to do in this field to avoid, for example, situations as illustrated here. This is the center of Port-au-Prince, the capital of Haiti, where um, the urban drainage system is not working very well as you can see all the waste water um, all the waste is simply released in this urban river that directly goes to the ocean so we can now consider water with all its property that means water that is used mainly for human consumption or um, or human-related activities like agriculture. First, we have water supply that requires water intake and then adduction of water, and then agriculture, uh, for which irrigation canals are uh, very important in order to be able to grow crops in areas that are less uh, served with water. But there are also a number of risks related to water. And one of the important risks is pollution. We have discussed this a little bit already before, and you can see from these uh, pictures that it is indeed a problem that has to be tackled. And then, of course, floods and inundation. We have the example of the city of Dinan along the Meuse River in Belgium that is uh, often flooded because the city is constructed really just along the river. Or this example of um, hurricanes for in th that happen quite often in the USA. We have this road here and that it was completely transformed into a river after the passage of Hurricane Harvey. We can see here the number of uh, disasters uh, that occurred between 1960 and 2018, which are classified by disaster types. And we can see that among these types, floods are uh, 
the are the most important that's the most important number of natural disaster that occur uh, in the world and it's increasing a lot as we can see here and this can also of course be a consequence of climate change this is another illustration of this problem we see the distribution of floods all along the world and um, it is significant almost everywhere with in some areas more than in a lot of areas in fact more than 100 floods over the period that is considered here uh, about 30 years so that's really really a lot because it's more than one flood every year so with all these examples, what will be the contents of this course? What are we going to, to see? First, the first part is an introduction to hydrology. We will discuss precipitation, water cycle, rainfall runoff relation, how they produce a hydrograph, and how from this hydrograph we can design um, urban sewers. Then, in the second part, we will discuss open channel flows. First, uniform flows, then, uh, then they will become more complex by looking at gradually varied flows and rapidly varied flows like hydraulic jumps, for example. And in the third part, uh, we will discuss spillways, starting first with the theory of weirs and then discussing different types of spillways like chute overflow or side channel spillways. And with all this, at the end of the course, you are expected to be able to perform water profile calculations in canals and rivers, to design irrigation channels, to design weirs and calculate the discharge that passes over these weirs, to do a preliminary design of a spillway, then to determine the design discharges that have to be used in urban drainage system and also to be able to design the sewer for this uh, drainage system. I hope you will enjoy this course and we can now go to the first lesson. Thank you for your attention.